everyone. Today's lecture will be short. We'll tell you about the ECB and CBC modes of encryption. We'll see more modes of encryption in forthcoming lectures. When we studied block ciphers, we only considered the encryption of a single block of plain text of length 64 bits in the case of triple des and 128 bits in the case of AES. In practice, though, one usually needs to encrypt data that is much longer than 128 bits. The question is, how can we use a block cipher E to encrypt the plain text M that is comprised of T blocks, each of length L bits? Methods for doing this are called modes of operation for a block cipher. Many modes of operation have been proposed in the cryptographic literature. I'll describe ECB and CBC in this lecture. In later lectures, we'll see the counter, GCM, and CCM modes of operation. One way to encrypt the multi-block message M is to use electronic codebook or ECB mode. In this mode, one encrypts the message blocks independently, one at a time. So Alice encrypts M1 to C1, M2 to C2, and M2 to CT. The receiver Bob would decrypt each ciphertext block independently to recover the plain text blocks. A drawback of ECB mode is that identical plain texts result in identical ciphertexts, when the same key is used, of course. And thus, ECB encryption is not semantically secure against chosen plain text attacks. To see why this is the case, Suppose that the adversary has a challenge ciphertext C of length T blocks. The adversary would like to learn something about the plaintext M that corresponds to C. This adversary selects the plaintext M primed of block length T and obtains from Alice the encryption C primed of M primed. Now, if C primed equals C, then the adversary concludes that M equals M primed. On the other hand, if C prime does not equal to C, then the adversary concludes that M is not equal to M primed. In either case, the adversary has learned something about the unknown plaintext M, namely, whether it equals M primed or not. And thus the adversary has broken semantic security. The main problem with ECB mode is that the encryption process is deterministic. And so, for security, one must introduce randomization into the encryption process. Cipher block chaining, or CBC mode, is a randomized mode of encryption. In CBC mode, encryption is performed by first selecting a random block C0. C0 is a random, non-secret initialization vector. Then, the plaintext blocks are encrypted as described in this equation and shown in the diagram. So Alice adds the IV to the first plaintext block M1 and encrypts the result to get the first ciphertext block C1. She then adds the ciphertext C1 to the second plaintext block M2, encrypts the result to get C2. Then adds C2 to the third plaintext block and encrypts to get C3, and so on. The transmitted ciphertext includes the initialization vector C0. You can check that Bob can decrypt the ciphertext to get the plaintext, as shown by this equation. I should emphasize that Alice selects a new random IV C0 for every plaintext M that she encrypts. Hence, identical plaintexts with different IVs result in different ciphertexts. And for this reason, CBC encryption is indeed semantically secure against chosen plaintext attacks, provided that the block cipher is a strong block cipher. This claim can be proven formally, although I won't do that in this course. Here is a nice example that illustrates why CBC encryption is superior to ECB encryption. The plaintext is an image shown here, which is converted somehow to a binary message. One would expect that blocks in this binary message that correspond to portions of the image 
of the same color are similar to each other and different from blocks that correspond to portions of the image of a different color. Here is the ECBE ciphertext of the plaintext shown as an image. And here is the CBC ciphertext of the plaintext also shown as an image. You can see that the CBC ciphertext appears to be a random image, whereas you can actually see the plaintext image in the ECB ciphertext. This shows that ECB encryption is especially bad for encrypting images. One can learn about the plaintext from the ciphertext simply by looking at the ciphertext. So, we've studied two important symmetric key encryption schemes, ChaCha20, which is a stream cipher, and AES, which is a block cipher. We're ready now to explore hash functions, a cryptographic primitive that has numerous applications in many cryptographic primitives and protocols. Please do subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified of new videos. I'll see you soon.